Whilst we're out here and we're set up, and we've just done this test run, uh, I get quite a few questions about the various controls that we use. Uh, each trailer is slightly different, even though we have several Merlins in the group. Some have more instrumentation than others. Uh, this trailer and that owned by Peter Grieve are probably the most instrumented because we've set our engines up as power plants. So it's the engine is hung from original Merlin bearers and we have the controls, various levers, switches and dials, which we would use uh, to monitor all of the parameters we need to successfully and safely ground run the engine. Now this trailer has two instrument panels. There's an upper panel, which I call the electrical panel. So all the electrics are controlled from here. And then down below, I'll demonstrate to uh, the pressure panel, which has all of the various engine pressures, which is non-electrical, that's uh, driven by capillary pressure. So on the left-hand side, we have the uh, first control quadrant. The first lever here is the pitch control lever. So with this, I can operate the uh, propeller from fine pitch to coarse pitch. It's a fully functioning hydromatic uh, propeller, constant speed, and has feathering as well. So this is as it would be on the Lancaster. Uh, next to it is one throttle. I have two levers, but they're actually bolted together. It's easier for me to operate with two thumbs when I'm crouched down in this position in the wind. Uh, I, I can sense a lot better with by using both hands on the controls. So that's the th one throttle. Coming across to the upper instrument dial, fuel pressure. Now this is uh, measured from the output of the Amal filter. There's a pressure filter. So that is the final delivery pressure to the carburetor. And on this engine, it runs at about eight and a quarter, about eight and a half PSI. The big instrument in the center is the RPM. This is the crankshaft speed. Uh, for public displays, I won't exceed 2,300 RPM which is equivalent to um, a propeller speed, uh, which is uh, through a reduction housing of 42%. Uh, it, it, the propeller runs at 42% the speed of the crankshaft. Um, next to it is the boost pressure. So this comes straight from the supercharger outlet. So it's measured in PSI, zero, obviously the engine's not running. You'll notice that when the engine is running, because of the uh, the natural uh, suction from the engine, that indicator will drop really to the end stop to about minus five. But as I build up uh, power, I will get probably about as high as minus two PSI at 2,300 RPM. That's equivalent to nearly 500 horsepower, which is enough for a public display. This instrument here is giving me the air pressure from the Hymatic air compressor which is used to drive the pneumatic rams on this trailer. Next to it is the volt gauge, You're giving me a voltmeter and a charge, a rate of charge. Now this, uh, the electrics on this trailer are fully functioning. So I have a Lancaster carbon pile voltage regulator, which is driven by the dynamo or generator, which is active on this. So I can determine the rate of charge. Typically it sits slightly below zero uh, until the RPM reaches 1300 RPM. And then I notice that the, uh, the, the batteries are being charged. So that's the amount of electricity or the amount of power that was consumed to start the engine as I was cranking the engine with the batteries. Now they're being replenished when I get above about 1300 RPM. Onto the switch panel. Uh, the upper switch here is the supercharger override. So I can force the supercharger to go into uh, between moderate and fully supercharged using the pneumatic ram. The lower one is the hot air duct uh, ram, so that uh, operates the, if, if I had a full cowling, the mechanism is still here even though the cowling isn't. Uh, these are the boost coils. I've got two boost coils, one on each magneto, uh, and their respective green light to indicate that they're activated. Magneto switches, um, left and right, uh, panel fuse, uh, a visual indication of on and off. That would be uh, if the magnetos are uh, active or not. Um, it doesn't indicate that the power to the panel is on. It does here on the 24 volt supply. So if, once the magnetos are live through the safety device, then that will go to on. Then I know that the magnetos are live.
engine start. Sorry, magneto ground button. So when I'm cranking, because the magneto doesn't generate much high tension during a slow crank, and I want the boost to be providing this, this, the spray of spark from the high tension, I will ground the magnetos until the engine fires on the boost coil. Then I'll release and the engine should start. Next instrument I'll show you, that's just a clock, so I know which time to run the engine for various events. I give, I get, they give me run times and I try to comply with them. Uh, oil circulation switch, locked on and toggle. Uh, and its respective green light, uh, and that's for circulating oil prior to start. I'll do that only at the beginning of the first run of the day. Once I've run the engine, then there's sufficient oil within the engine that I don't need to reprime. Panel switch, giving me 24 volts. Uh, underneath, I can't really show you, but there is a total run clock. It gives me the total elapsed time that the magnet has been live on this trailer. Uh, there is a charge current switch, a safety cutout switch, big red knob, I need to stop it, and a, a safety relay reset button. On the right quadrant, there are two functions. There's the fuel cutoff lever, which comes through to idle cutoff, and that's how I stop the engine. I literally starve the engine of fuel and it just stops. This lever is not used on this engine. That, this will be used on the early baby Merlins, which have siphon cutouts on the carburetor. So that's not utilized here. Feathering switch, feathering button. With this, I can feather the propeller. And I do that prior to transport after an event. I'll just hold that until the propeller blades are edge on and then release. Okay, the next, I'll lower the camera to the lower instrument panel. Point it down there a bit. So these are the pressure instruments. Um, left, we have ambient air temperature. So it's currently about 20, 25, 26 degrees. It's a little bit higher than the actual temperature because the warmth of the engine, but that just gives me an idea of just uh, what the ambient air temperature is. This is the radiator temperature. So this is the coolant. So it's currently at 85 degrees Celsius, having just run this engine. Oil temperature currently at 60 degrees Celsius. Then three pressure gauges here, fuel pressure. This is from the fu mechanical fuel pump. Remember before I mentioned I had fuel pressure after the Amal pressure regulator. So this is coming from the mechanical pump in the engine to the Amal regulator. So this runs typically higher than the final delivery pressure. Oil pressure, uh, nominally 60, 65 PSI when it's running and suction. On this engine I have an active vacuum pump and that sucks any oil and fuel residue which drips down into the carburetor. It sucks that back up into the oil tank. So those are the instruments that I use. Um, oh, and the, and the Kai gas priming, which I hadn't mentioned. This is what I use to prime, pump this in and out, just to prime the fuel prior to starting. Give it lots of pumps prior to a cold start and probably hardly any when it's a hot start. And those are the controls that I use. Whilst we're here, I want to demonstrate the supercharger changeover valve. It's operation. This is this pneumatic ram in here. This one, and that's attached down at the bottom end to a valve, which is difficult to get to. Hopefully you can see it there. There, in the center of the screen, there's a valve. If I operate my compressed air, I'll switch that from moderately supercharged to fully supercharged, just to show you how it works. Uh, I'm back again. Does that show? I miss all that. Let's try it again. Which one is the switch? Let me just it from this angle. Right, let's try it again. And back. That's it. This is the, the hot air door, which is on a separate rack.
that would operate that mechanism and then release it and those are operated from the two override switches here the supercharger override switch and the hot air door that's used up all the all the uh, compressed air now it was at 450 it's down to zero so whilst I'm here, I'm just going to demonstrate the feathering to talk about it. So this is the button, button that I use to operate the feathering. Um, and what I'll do is, if you watch, if, you, if I zoom in on this pressure gauge, this is the feathering pump. You'll see it jumps up. Gives about 500 psi. Let's show you the propeller. I can't, hopefully you can see it slowly feathering. That's it, it's fully feathered now.